what's going on YouTube welcome back today we're going to talk about securing Linux user accounts so previously in previous videos we talked about Linux security and I dedicated a separate node file for securing Linux systems um, as you can see if you are subscribed to the channel membership you can access it now today I'm going to talk about some of the methods some of the best practices that you can follow to secure your user accounts against all sorts of uh, password attacks brute force attacks you want to prevent these attacks from occurring to your server or to your computer so the first thing that we have to do is to create a dedicated or create dedicated users for administrative tasks so basically we should not rely on root to perform administrative operations or to perform system administrative tasks we should avoid to use the, the root account unless it is very necessary because any mistake you could do with the root account you would expo you may expose the system to um, rice attack vectors or you might actually commit some mistake that would make the system unbootable so you want to avoid using the root user account so instead if you want to create user accounts that have administrative privileges we can actually do that using the following command for example let's copy this command and create a user that is an ad ad administrative user and belongs to the sudo world group so as you can see using the command user mode we can add a new user and then we can specify that we want to add the username to the sudo group so here let's say for example i'm going to add a new user called um, security okay so first we have to add the user to uh, our system basically i don't have it so user add security I have to use sudo this time okay and then we can add that user to the sudo group again permission denied gonna have to use sudo okay now this user is part of the sudo group how do we know that this user is part of the sudo group we can cat etc group okay and then grab sudo this will display the users that are part of the group named sudo as you can see we have two users Kali the current user I am using and the user that, that we have just added this way we can use such users to perform administrative operations without um, compromising the main root user account that's the first thing or the basic simple thing you can do to um, secure your user accounts so now of course depending on the distributions you are using the command that we just executed applies on dpn but if you are talking about fedora and red hat uh, you can use the following command and the group name for the sudo it is wheel so in dpn it is sudo in red hat and fedora systems it is wheel now the next thing that we want to do is to disable the root user account if possible of course so basically to disable any user account now there are many user accounts that you're required or is recommended to disable among them in the root account you don't want any user or any attacker who may uh, access or compromise the system to be able to log into the root account so we want to disable the root account this way we prevent all sorts of root logins privilege escalations to root so we can do that using or by converting or by setting the shell of the root account to no login so if you go now to cat etc pass the password file we can see the usernames existing on the system we can see security we can see squashed and as you can see all of these users have home directory home squashed home security and the shell is set to bin slash sh it means that these users can log in if you go up and check the user account root so root is able to log in as well so to change that 
To disable the login for any of these users, all we have to do is to change the shell from the existing one okay, into this one user s bin no login it's very simple all you have to do is to nano etc and here and instead of this you can copy that and change it now we recommend it's recommended to use s bin no login so replace user bin zsh with s bin no login like this one take this one copy paste it here that's how you will prevent the user from logging in now let's take an example so now I'm going to say sudo etc password okay all right so what I'm going to do I'm going to disable the shell for the user that I have just added security from bin sh into user sbin no login to security okay so we didn't set the password for user security let's go back to nano set um, the shell back to how it was bin sh okay so now we type password security to change the password of the user security you may not view or modify password and information for security okay use elevated mode new password let's say kelly 2023 kelly 2023 okay now we change the password of the user security if we sue the security now Kelly 2023. As you can see, we are logged in as security. Okay, let's sue back to Kelly. Okay, now we are back with the user Kelly. Okay, so now sudo nano etc uh, password. This time we're going to disable the shell for that user and set it to user as being no login okay now try to log in with, with that user so it doesn't work let's try one more time the account is currently not available that's how it's gonna be if you try to log in with a username whose shell was set to uh, or the login for the shell was disabled and that's very effective if you want to protect privileged users among them is the root from uh, being abused uh, by attackers so suppose an attacker got access to your system as this user now if you have disabled the uh, sh login shell for the root user the attacker will not be able to escalate the privileges to the root user because simply they cannot use the shell of that user it's disabled it's very important to do that on systems that's very sensitive to that has that contains sensitive information okay so disabling user account root account creating dedicated users for administrative tasks now enforcing password policy so by default if you are using a dpn or ubuntu you can control the password policy using this file if you are using Red Hat and Fedora you can control uh, the configuration of the password policy using this file on this on this path okay now since I'm using Debian let's take a look at the current password policies I have on my system so let's copy the path and say sudo nano again Alright, so this file controls the password policies. As you can see, we have these three lines. Now, 
if you want to change the password policy you want to locate this line and from here you can add all of the required key parameters that you need to set in order to control the password policy for example these parameters are used to set the password policy for example this one <coughs> you can use this one to set the minimum allowed length for new passwords <coughs> Here you can control the number of characters in the new password that were not present in the old password. Minimum class, and here you can control the uh, classes of characters. It's also a number. Bad words, if you want to prevent people from using specific words like QWERTY, um, uh, surnames, names, you can use bad words as well. Let's take an example. So here in this line, I can say if I want to minimum length will be 8 so this way all of the new users who create while they are creating passwords they are required to create the passwords uh, with at least 8 number of characters also I can use bad words and the bad words I can specify a list of words at the same time I can use um, minimum classes so required here this one sets the number of uh, uppercase lowercase characters that you are required to use so the minimum class is five and you hit the save and then this way you enforce the password policy on the users on the passwords this way you prevent brute force attacks from succeeding so i'm going to cancel that and save the file all right now, <coughs> this, uh, this is regarding the password policy, like the minimum length, the minimum number of characters, the bad words. Now, if you want to control when, the <coughs> when does the password expire, <coughs> you have to locate this file. So if you go now to login, <coughs> scrolling all the way down, we locate these key parameters. Yeah, here. So password maximum days. This is the maximum number of days a password is allowed to uh, exist. So basically, if we set this to 30, okay, if you set this number to 30, we will tell the user to change the password after 30 days. So after 30 days, they will be prompt to change the password. Passing password minimum days. And we have password warnage. Password minimum days is the number of days before the user can change the password. So here it is zero. It means once you set, once the user create creates the password, they are able to change the password at the same day. If you set this to two, it will prevent the user from changing the password. Okay, before two days have completely passed. Password warnage. So password warnage here is set to 7 and the default value is 7. So it's used to war to change to warn the user to change the password. So basically after 7 days it warns the user to change the password. But since the, pa the password maximum is set to uh, 5 nines it's not going to disable your account if you don't change the password. Once this period or once the number of days hits this number it's going to force for forcibly and uh, make you change the password. This is how you set the password expiration and it's very important as well. Disable unused accounts. Now, we saw earlier that to disable an account, all we have to do is to change the shell or the existing shell to sbin no login. Now you can apply that to any sort of account you have on the system, whether the account is the service account or a regular normal account. Make sure also to disable the login for these accounts, WWData, Mongo, and NGINX, because these use accounts are controlled mainly by or mainly by web servers. So if the web server or the website got compromised, you don't want the attacker to have a shell on the system. Okay, so I want to set the disable the login for these accounts. Lastly, 
disabling SSH root logins. So if you have an SSH server running on your machine and users are uh, using the computer remotely or they are logging in remotely using SSH, you want to uh, disable the root logins. You can do that by locating the file, the configuration file of the SSH and adding this line. Let's see if I have this on my system. So cat etc sh sh config and grab root so as you can see root is allowed to log in on my machine because i don't have this line set so all i have to do here is take this and copy this and paste it in the file this will disable the root user from logging in so this way you actually maximize your chances of uh, making the attacker fail any privileged escalation attempts to any privileged account such as the root user also if you have other other privileged accounts that you don't want anyone to use or to log into unless you enable it back yourself you can do that again by disabling the shell login shell and change it to user spin no login or spin no login depending on your system so that's briefly some of the measures or some of the major ways you can follow to secure your Linux user accounts. Now, if you want uh, a reference for that, or if you want to challenge yourself, you can open this task six in this room, Linux system hardening. So I covered all of these and more as well. So you don't need to take a look at these if you watch the video. But there are questions here to answer if you want to test your knowledge. One way to disable an account is to edit the password file and change the account shell. What is the suggested value? This one. What's the name of the Red Hat and Fedora systems sudo as a group with its wheel? On Ubuntu and Debian, it is sudo. Other than TryHackMe and Ubuntu, what's the username that belongs to the sudo as a group? So in that case, it was Blacksmith, but we said earlier how to view all of the users that are part of any group. So you can display the groups and the users using this command. So cat etc group. As you can see, you can see the users and the groups. But if you want to see the sudo, you can grab sudo. You can see the users who are part of sudo. You can also see the users who are part of the root group. It's only one user. You can see the users who are part of the existing user group, Kali. So many users are part of the Kali group, ADM, dial out. Most of these users are service accounts. They don't have a uh, login shell. All right, guys. So that was it.